Yo, what's going on, y'all? It's Cone back here again today with another video. And today, I want to talk for a bit about this insane Western Conference playoff race that we've got going on right now. It's very reminiscent of last year's chaotic Western Conference, where outside of the top three seeded teams in the Nuggets, the Kings, and the Grizzlies, we didn't really know where anybody was going to finish going into the final few days of the regular season. It was a conference that all year, if you lost a couple games, you were going to fall down like five spots to a playing team. And if you won a couple, hey, guess what? You've now got home court advantage in the first round. It was that close the entire season. A good example of this is how the four seeded Phoenix Suns were just three games ahead of the nine seeded New Orleans Pelicans, who theoretically had to win not one, but two playing games to even make the playoffs in the first place. It was a lot of fun to follow. You had the Lakers surging up the standings. Seems like the Pelicans and the Mavericks dropping off drastically. Great playing games between the Lakers and the Timberwolves and the Thunder and the Pelicans. Great series like Sacramento versus Golden State. Minnesota versus Denver was really fun despite it not lasting a lot of games. It was just a great Western Conference to follow all season. And it was one that was incredibly chaotic, which for me personally, I really enjoy. And this year's Western Conference has been a lot of the same, but I think a lot of people don't realize that it could be even more chaotic than last season's was going down the stretch. And when we get to the playoffs, we might be in for one of the best Western Conference playoffs of all time. Once again, at the top of the Western Conference, we've got a few teams that have somewhat separated themselves from the pack, but this time it's four teams and it's not the four teams that I think anybody would have picked to be the top four at this point in the season. Sure, you might have picked the Denver Nuggets as the reigning champions. I know I would have had them up here. The Clippers, also, maybe they still had Paul George and Kawhi Leonard and were in James Harden rumors going into the season. So theoretically, they felt like a team that could finish top four. But not a lot of people were picking the Oklahoma City Thunder and the Minnesota Timberwolves to be up here. And certainly not a lot of people were picking them to be the one and the two seed probably heading into the All-Star break. At the very least, two of the top four teams going into the All-Star break. That would have made you sound crazy if you picked that at the beginning of the season, but it's the reality right now. Although, the one seed is changing hands rapidly up here towards the top of the Western Conference. I don't know what the record is for a number of times that a one seed has changed throughout the season. It feels like this year might set that record. The Minnesota Timberwolves have held up for a majority of the year, but I know the Thunder have gotten it a couple of times. The Nuggets have been up there. The Los Angeles Clippers recently held it for a couple of games. And if one of these teams goes on a single like two or three game losing streak, it looks really bad for them. You have to stay on your A game in these top four spots if you want to remain in contention for that one seed. It is really, really close, especially because you lose a couple of games and you go from having home court advantage throughout the entire Western Conference to now potentially having it for just one round as the four seed. Speaking of that, the Nuggets are the four seed right now, which is crazy. The reigning champions, imagine if you're the five seed and you've got to face them in the first round. Or the Clippers, as a six seed, you've got to face them as a three seed, maybe the hottest team in the entire league right now. You've got the Wolves up there at the top with a historically great defense. They were clamping teams up just at a game against the Clippers where they were destroying them. The Clippers couldn't get anything going. And again, they've been red hot behind Kawhi Leonard, James Harden, and Paul George for a majority of the past month, month and a half. The Thunder are young, but despite not having playoff experience, all the advanced analytics point to them being one of the best teams in the world. They're top five on both sides of the ball, specifically in the half court, which is great for a playoff setting. They've got an MVP caliber player in Shea Gilgis Alexander, two great young rising stars in Chet and Jalen Williams, a lot of great supporting role players in the cast, a great coach in Mark Dagnalt. Like this Thunder team is ready. All four of these top teams are ridiculously talented and they feel like any one of them could make a deep run in the Western Conference, but they're definitely not alone. While they're currently at the head of the table, there are a lot of teams that aren't that far behind them, and if they make second half runs, could try and catch one of those teams if one goes on a skid and in a playoff series, could potentially give them a lot of trouble. The Pelicans are a great example of this. At the five seed, a team with Zion, Brandon Ingram, and CJ McCollum is not exactly who you would potentially want to see in a first round matchup. They finally got their stars healthy, and it's allowed them to be one of the better teams in the Western Conference for a majority of the season. That's a team that is really scary in a first round matchup. The Phoenix Suns with Devin Booker, Kevin Durant, and Bradley the Beal are the sixth seed right now. The Suns are starting to figure things out ever since they got those three stars healthy and they've now went ahead and added Royce O'Neal, David Roddy. They just added Thaddeus Young as well in the buyout market. They added all these guys at the deadline. They feel poised to potentially go on a run in the second half of the season that I could see getting them pretty close to trying to be a top four seed in the West. The Sacramento Kings were a three seed last season, are now down to a seven seed as a playing team, and they're eight games above 500 in this spot with De'Aaron Fox and DeMontis Sabonis, who are both not just all-star caliber players, but both all NBA level guys. 
They've also got Keegan Murray, who's taken a bunch of strides on the defensive end. This feels like a team that is also really scary in a potential playoff series, a team that could give you a lot of problems if you're not able to slow down their high-paced offense. The eight seed at the moment are the Dallas Mavericks, who have Luka Doncic, Kyrie Irving, just made a couple of massive trades at the deadline involving P.J. Washington and Daniel Gafford. Tim Hardaway Jr. is a big-time bucket getter off the bench. Some great role players. If you want to talk about teams that are poised to make a second half run, the Mavericks certainly feel like one of those teams. They've been playing their best basketball even before making the acquisitions. And with those guys in town, this feels like a really well-rounded Mavericks team that is, again, being led by Luka Doncic, one of the best players in the world, and a guy that has consistently raised his game in the playoffs to an unbelievable level. If you want to talk about teams that a top squad doesn't want to face in the first round, Dallas is certainly in that conversation, and they may not even have to because I could see Dallas pushing their way to a top four or five seed by the time this season is done. Right now is the eight seed. They're only a single game behind the five seeded New Orleans Pelicans at the moment and just five games back of the four seeded and three seeded Denver Nuggets and Los Angeles Clippers. Not too far behind them are two teams that before the season, a lot of people might've called championship contenders. You've got the Los Angeles Lakers who last year made a surprising run to the Western Conference Finals, made some additions in the off season. And this year have had LeBron James at 80 healthy for majority of the season, but they're just the nine seed right now, two games above 500. They have been figuring it out a little bit as of late, and they do still think a team that's pretty scary to face off against just by the sole fact that they have LeBron James at 80 going into a potential playoff environment. And right now, they would face off against the Golden State Warriors in a play-in battle, which would be amazing. Another game between LeBron James and Steph Curry, and this one decides who even gets a chance to go ahead and make the playoffs loser goes home. That's really, really fun. And this Warriors team has been really figuring it out as of late. They've won five games in a row. I think they're six and one in their last seven. Steph is still amazing. Kuminga has really stepped up. He's been their breakout player this season. Wiggins is finding his groove. Draymond Green is back and he's playing well. Clay Thompson has been hit or miss, but still has his moments. They've got great play from some of their young guys. This Warriors team feels like they could still be pretty scary in a playoff setting because of their ridiculous amount of playoff experience. They've won a bunch of championships and a Lakers Warriors playing game would be ridiculously entertaining hoops. Not to mention, we'd see some amazing playoff series if the standings stay the same. Not that I think they're going to, but if they did, think about like Minnesota versus Dallas as a first run series. Luka Doncic and the New Look Mavericks versus Anthony Edwards and the Timberwolves. Timberwolves trying to prove all the people calling them frauds wrong, while the Mavericks are trying to make history as an eight seed, defeating a one seed, and it feels like they've got the potential to do so. The Thunder would face off against the Kings, two teams that not a lot of people believe in, both with a chance to move on to the second round. You've got the Phoenix Suns facing off against the Los Angeles Clippers, Kevin Durant against Kawhi, Bradley Beal versus James Harden, Devin Booker versus Paul George, two amazing big threes battling it out. We'd have the Pelicans who are finally healthy facing off against the Nuggets who are trying to defend their title, Zion going up against the front court of Michael Porter Jr., Aaron Gordon, and Nicole Jokic, Brandon Ingram who showed in that one playoff series he played in that he could be a huge time playoff riser, showing what he can do against the defending champs, Jamal Murray facing off against CJ McCollum, who are both having fantastic seasons. Like every series would be amazing hoops. And there's a good chance that this all gets shuffled, but any combination of the teams that we have right now is going to be really, really fun. I can't think of a single bad series that we're going to get with the 10 or so teams that I could potentially see making the playoffs. Even the Utah Jazz and Rockets have a chance at the 11 and 12 spots. They're not that far behind. So that adds another element of intrigue. In all likelihood, one of the Warriors or Lakers, two teams that had championship aspirations going into the season aren't even going to make the playoffs. That could lead to a massive shakeup in the offseason. Hell, maybe even both of them have to make a shakeup. What do they do from there? We talk about all the great teams that have to prove themselves, like the Clippers. This could be one of their last chances to make a run. Phoenix needs to show that this big three is capable of something. Can the Thunder prove the doubters wrong? Same thing with the Timberwolves. Can the Denver Nuggets defend their title? There are so many storylines going into these playoffs. It's going to be a great second half of the season. Post All-Star break, I'm expecting a lot of chaos. Teams moving up and down the standings, in and out of the play-in, trying to fight for home court advantage, that battle between those top four teams at the top, who's going to end up as the one seed, who will end up as the four seed, and of course, the spots between. Just a lot going on in the Western Conference. And of course, just amazing talent all over the place. MVP candidates between Shea, Jokic, Luka. Can he help the Mavericks rise up the standings to potentially make his way to the top of the MVP race? It's going to be a lot of fun. I can't wait to see how it goes. It's really exciting. One of the most exciting playoff races I can imagine. And I think these playoffs are going to be beyond special, especially that playing tournament. We're going to end up with the best crop of playing teams that we've ever had. And it's going to lead to some of the best hoops that we've seen 
in a minute. I'm really excited if you can't tell. Uh, yeah, I think those are my thoughts on the Western Conference playoff race at the moment. Let me know who you think ends up where. Where do you think your favorite team ends up seeding wise? Who do you see winning the Western Conference at the moment? Who's a dark horse for you? And yeah, give me any of your other predictions for the rest of the West this season. I appreciate y'all watching. Leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed. Hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on future videos. I'll see y'all later. Real one, sit back.